Hey guys, Rob Skiba here for another Seed Behind the Scenes video presentation. In this one, I'm going to show you what it was like to work with the actors and do motion capture. Now, one of the things I didn't mention in the previous video, where I introduced the actors, is that I already cast the characters of Catalano and Thompson, but I still didn't have my main character. And it was like down to the last minute uh, that I got my leading actor in Greg Crick. And literally, we did the audition the morning that I left for South Africa. So we did the audition, I got on a plane, and then I flew to South Africa, and then I finally got to meet all the actors. But Greg is actually a pretty big up-and-coming actor in South Africa. In fact, he's doing a lot of American productions, films and television shows and stuff like that. God is with us! God is with us! So uh, we were extremely fortunate to get him and uh, that he just so happened to be in country the same time that I was. So uh, needless to say, I was very excited to finally meet all the actors and to work with them. And uh, this video will show you what that was like. And after that, we'll listen to an interview I did with our extremely talented visual effects supervisor. Check it out. Awfully excited ah. about getting started today. It's going to be good. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be awesome. Thank Sweet. you guys so much. I got scripts for you. Sweet. Just print it up here. Uh, I have a just dialogue only script, mm -hmm. as well as uh, you know, the whole story. A few minor changes, uh, mostly between you two. Cool. Uh, I, I was watching on the plane here. Uh, there's a Amazon uh, series called Dog Fights. It's all oh, yeah. about you know, famous dog fights in history. So I was looking at dog fights from Guadalcanal, the Solomon Island campaign, mm -hmm. and the pilot does something really cool. He basically puts on the brakes, and the plane does a skid like this, and it causes this one to go forward. So now, now he's got the lead, and he mm -hmm. blasts him out of the sky. But I'm going to have you, uh, so you're going to call for the skid, yeah. and everybody's going to be talking about it. And so when you do the skid, you're telling him, well, I'm going to line it up for, you're going to get a perfect broadside. Because you're, you know, right now you're looking at a small target, but you're going to have the whole side of the airplane here. So when you pull the skid, the, the, the lead Japanese starts going forward, and you whip around. <laughs> he hits the gas tank and goes down. Like that. So it's it's a lot more intense than the original. It was originally scripted. <laughs> okay. But it did have a few lines of dialogue there. So I want to get Matt and see if we can go find a corner somewhere in here. This is the full script. Oh, please. Yeah, I'll tell you guys, uh, <laughs> the, the sound design, the music, and the CGI is, is top notch. I mean, it's like crazy good. So no pressure, it's all <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. These actors. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. but everything's looking, and sound is fantastic. So nice. With, this is going to be tough for you guys here, at least it's going to be tough for me, is uh, <coughs> we're just doing facial. Yeah. So, you know, we can't really... Yeah, we got to keep it. you got to keep So, think uh, emotive, you know, your facial expressions, that's what we're capturing. That's going to go into the characters, the, the CGI characters. Yeah. They'll probably just get somebody else to do the mining or what happened with the body uh, later on in the year. That, that's where we're at right now. So, you're going to have to just stay focused on being emotive, looking forward. Okay. Without, you know, so, it's more static. Than it's, it's very static. Yeah. Just for the purpose of the facial capture. All right, and from the top of the scene, action. We're turning into Swiss cheese! I know, I know, I've got a misfire, Peter's jet! Thompson, can you get a shot? No, he's too high! I can't get up! I'm losing her! Brace yourselves, we're, we're going down! Fantastic. Great job, guys. Really good. I'm like crazy super excited right now. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I feel like a seven year old. <laughs> I feel good about it. You guys feel yeah. good? Yeah. yeah. Want to get in there? Sure. Yeah. Get in the hot seat. This we can come out a bit wider. There. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we we'll call action. We'll good. skip that first. Line. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll start okay. the... Good. Okay. Standing by. Ready? Standing to my camera. Yes. Okay. Standing to my camera. He's my, once he gets my stuff. Are we going to use a clap or something for sync? Uh, we're going to get a beep from, a okay. beep from, from Rob. I'm going to beep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beep. Okay. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep giving us a deep. <laughs> Set gonna give us a tone, he's gonna give us a tone and a bleep, so we'll roll. Okay. Then you'll bleep, <coughs> and then uh, you can go. Awesome. <coughs> one, uh, just one single one. Um, yeah, just give us a single bleep, uh, so we can get a sense. Or you can give us tone and then switch it off. Yeah, I've got a single bleep on there. Okay. Running, ready. Okay. Action. Wow. Wow. Look at that sunset. Sure beats Hell's Kitchen, eh, Thompson? <laughs> you kidding? This place is paradise by comparison. I heard that. Uh, the, you know, let's hope it stays that way. That's, because right. you, you know what's going to happen right here. It's yeah. like, this place is about to be shredded by war. It stays that way, yeah. This one, I know. Yep. Let's hope it stays that way. All right, boys, it's getting late. Got everything we need? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I'm heading back. You know, I was thinking. Maybe once the war's over, we... Uh -oh. What's the matter? We got company. Looks like a couple Zeeks. Where? Six o'clock high. I don't think they spotted us yet, though. So this is Hilton, and uh, I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am to have him on board with this project. He comes with a wealth of experience and knowledge and uh, a pretty extensive background in the visual effects field. I'll put the links in the description below if you want to check out more of his bio, but he's the founder of Synergistics. With over 27 years of experience, Hilton's areas of expertise include visual effects supervision, VFX direction, LiDAR scanning, cyber scanning, aerial LiDAR scanning, and virtual reality development. He is Recent long-form projects include the visual effects supervisor for the Disney ABC series of Kings and Prophets, on-set supervisor for Scott Stewart, Dominion, and Adam Sandler's Blended, uh, among other projects. You can check out all the awards he's won on the right-hand side there. I mean, just a ton of experience. You can go to his IMDB page and scroll down and just look at some of his recent projects, some of the highlights here. London Has Fallen, Blended, The Giver, Tomb Raider, just to name a few. Of course, you can scroll down and see, uh, you know, how many other TV shows and movies he's been involved with uh, working on the visual effects and as VFX supervisor and whatnot. And uh, check this out. This is his demo reel. When Johan first told me about Hilton, he sent me to his Vimeo page and I looked at a bunch of his demos, this being one of them. And uh, I mean, just check this stuff out. Look, I mean, set extensions and creation of tents and things that horses, all kinds of things that aren't really there. Uh, you know, clearly with this level of expertise and creativity, Hilton and his team are the perfect match for this project. Uh, I mean, if, you know, this is like having South Africa's Industrial Light and Magic working on my project. Uh, you know, I'm, I've cut this down just a little bit for the purpose of this video right here. You can check out the full version on um, his Vimeo page. But yeah, very, very excited. So now I'll take you to the interview that I did with him while, while we were on site doing the motion capture. I been in the business for 31 years and I started the very first animation studio in South Africa mm -hmm. 1989 and pretty much had the privilege of working with some of the most incredible talent uh, this country's ever generated and created mm -hmm. and still do so we've been around and uh, animation and visual effects has been a passion of mine pretty much since uh, George Lucas uh, put Star Wars up on the screen. I think a lot yeah, of us got that into that. We could all say that probably. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, uh, yeah, great. Yeah. Currently, I mean, uh, our, our team is in incredibly flexible and it's a, a talented uh, bunch of people that have multidiscipline skills and um, very proud to be part of that. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Uh, what's the name of your company? Synergistics. Synergistics, yeah. yeah. So we yeah. were just there. You yeah. guys are in a temporary facility, right? Yeah, now. right now. We're, we're moving to uh, new studios that are currently being built. By the end of March, I think we should be in there. Another one of those nightmares that you move and mm -hmm. go through things, but uh, it's going to be our new permanent home, and we're incredibly excited. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Yeah. So I'm very excited to have you on board with this right. project. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming on board. Yeah. How did you, how did that come about? How did you find out about this project? And well, Johan uh, came to me and uh, said to me, I've got to show you something, which is incredible. And we read it and we went, wow, 
Okay, this is the, this could be something that has uh, got such longevity legs and and it's incredibly dynamic and um, it's the kind of project that we love. You know, it's the kind of thing we get involved with and when we do, it's uh, it's all in or nothing. You know, and uh, I think the team is also incredibly excited by it. So mm. that, that that for me is always a good indicator. Yeah, that was great yeah. for me also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was very exciting yeah. to see a bunch of people that were just as excited about the project as, mm. as I am. That's, that's yeah. awesome. So um, a while back, I made the decision to do this 100% CGI. Um, uh, have you done stuff that was all CGI or you yeah. do mostly do CGI no, we're, we're, mixture? We're a mixed discipline, but uh, the, the principles are identical. Whether you're shooting for CGI or whether you're shooting for live action or integration of the things, the way that you approach it, and the way that you shoot it, and the way that you, you, you do things is you've got to come from a live action background. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of misconception in terms of, oh, because it's CGI, we can do anything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it does give you uh, all that flexibility, but there's a lot of things that come with that that basically take you into the realm of where you step outside a story mm -hmm. because you're not actually telling the story, you're showing what the technology can do. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like what you've now chosen to do on this particular thing, you're approaching it from a live action perspective and you, you're telling the story from a live action perspective in a historical way. Your medium mm -hmm. just happens to be CGI. Mm -hmm. It could very well be live action, could very well be in an actual jungle. Mm -hmm. But the technology today has risen to that sort of level that you are able to tell that story. And there are more flexible things that you can do. And you can get to camera angles. I mean, Lion King's a perfect example, mm -hmm. where you, you can find camera angles that live action guys wish they had, but they're still not breaking the principles of telling the story. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where, where this particular project is, is that the ability to be able to tell the story and tell it in a way that is very much sort of contemporary to where things are at today. Yeah, yeah, very good. So what were we doing here today, and what are you going to do after? Okay, so I mean, basically what we were doing here today is based getting uh, face shape and information. And it's critical to the emotive factor of the story. Being able to have uh, actors that who can actually go through the voiceover, go through the dynamics, go through the dialogue, and at the same time we're capturing all the information around their face at this point in time to remap that to the CGI characters. Mm -hmm. And it's by doing that we're able to take what the live action people were bringing to the party mm -hmm. and putting that into a computer graphic character, thus allowing the ability to have the human link between that and still buying into the emotive factor. So you're not, you're not creating a wall because it's just a visual that's over there, mm -hmm. you're now creating something which is a bonding moment in terms of the, the ability. So having the, the, the ability to capture the live action mm -hmm. and being able to then remap that to a CGI character then gives us that uh, capability and it gives you as a director the timing, the pace, the weight mm -hmm. of how something is going to be communicated, which in turn really and truly helps us so much because we're not trying mm -hmm. to guess what the face is going to be doing. Right. We know what it's doing and you as the director are happy with the performance. Mm -hmm. So it takes out a lot of middle ground type activity, but at the same time it gives us a, a really solid grounding in terms of weight and telling that story. Fantastic. Yeah. When we first talked, we don't have a crazy budget on this project, mm. uh, but we were shooting for sort of a, a target level of quality, and yeah. you threw out a movie that I'd never heard of before, Tintin. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to me a little bit about that. Well, I think t <clears throat> what was really great about Tintin is that you still knew you were in, in a CGI world, mm -hmm. but you bought the fact that it was grounded in reality, mm -hmm. the way the textures were, the way that the performances acted, and all of that kind of thing. And I think that's very much what uh, we're doing here. You know, we're going to be taking that, I mean, the, the, the level of CGI and the type of stuff that we're doing the, these days is already bordering on complete and utter realism. Mm -hmm. And there's also a problem that you have if you go too far down the realism side, uh, specifically within the, the limitations of where we're currently at, you have this thing which is called the Uncanny Two Valley. valley. Yeah. And the Uncanny Valley is something which leaves your audience feeling a little bit uncomfortable. You walk mm -hmm. out of there and you go, something's not quite right and you just don't buy into the character. Mm. So by taking it to, which would be 80% of the way, you're trying to take out that aspect of the uncanny mm. valley. And that then gives you, the uh, the audience, et cetera, to be able to buy into the story and you're telling the story and you're not worrying about, oh my God, his face didn't work exactly right, et cetera, mm. because the left muscle wasn't uh, going through there. There's thousands of expressions that you'll go through in a microsecond mm. in a human face. And if that's not right, you as a human will instantly tell that that's not right. And it's the same thing if you're looking at things like Jurassic Park, for example. Mm -hmm. Jurassic Park in the early ones still stands up today because nobody knows what a T-Rex looks like mm -hmm. and how that behaves. But the level of realism and texture and all of that 
says to you that it's real. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's an, that's an important factor. We're not trying to be completely photoreal um, because we don't want to end up in that space. Mm -hmm. And also to, uh, by going to the what we call the 80% rule right now, we can get into a place very quickly and have something which looks really special and spectacular and still be able to tell the story without dropping into the uncanny valley. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, and finally, what excites you most about working on Seed? Well, I think that the, the, the storyline, I think, is fantastic. I think the mythology that you've uh, brought into this in terms of the, the giant creatures, mm -hmm. I think that's all the creature itself. I think that that's, that's fantastic. I think the opportunity um, in terms of a TV series or a feature mm -hmm. film down the line, in terms of taking it into that realm, and I think it's an incredibly uh, ambitious project, and uh, mm -hmm. I like challenges, and uh, my team like challenges. Sometimes they, 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 they say, oh, it's a bit too challenging, but at the end of the day, they're passionate about what they want and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, uh, it's a phenomenal project, and I think uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing where and how we can take this and where it's going to go in future. Well, thank you, know? you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Cool. Seed is our effort to take all of my research over the past couple of decades and to put it into a mainstream television production that can literally reach millions of people. And this has only been made possible by our supporters over the years. And again, I can't thank you enough. You know who you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you'd like to see this project continue beyond the teaser and you'd like to sow into Seed as well, you can do so by clicking the link in the description below. If you click on that link, it takes you to the main page of our website and there you can scroll down and you'll see right away there are several options for you to check out if you're, you're unfamiliar with the project and click on the seed development read the general overview if you'd like to read what happens after the teaser you can click on the PDF here and read the first script uh, in the series for free and if you missed the audio drama we did back in 2014 you can click on there you can click uh, to get on our email list check out our, our previous seed updates and blogs to see our recent progress and uh, if you want to know about our research, you can click on that link right there. That will take you to our seed store where you'll see uh, right at the top here, I've got our um, the first four scripts of the series put together in a book and several different versions of it, sort of a basic version, a special edition version, and a limited collector's edition version, numbered and signed by me. And, of course, we got other seed merchandise you can check out there, and then you get to the section of the research behind Seed. If you want to know what Seed's about, well, here you go. Uh, it's pretty much anything I've written about, done conferences about, talked about on my YouTube channel and radio shows, and all of those resources are available here on our Seed website and various package deals that you could take advantage of if you so desire. Now, going back to the main page, keep scrolling down, there's a video, What is Seed? Talks. It's a video I did back in 2010 explaining the project other parts of the project, the comic book, the fiction novels, the video games, of course the TV series, the goals, where we are in our fundraising, and finally get to where it says be a sower. This is how you can contribute to the project if you so desire. If you believe in what we're doing, then you can get behind us by clicking on any of these four links right here. If you want to pay by PayPal or credit card, you can click on option number one. If you'd rather send a check or money order, you can click option two. If you'd like to contribute with crypto you can use option three and if you want a tax deductible contribution you can write off you can click on option number four now we are not a 501 c3 but we are sort of underneath one as a subcontractor with mountain movers international so if you click on that link it takes you to the mountain movers paypal account and there you can make a contribution mountain movers takes eight percent and an admin fee covers the credit card fees as well as um, helps to support their ministry so if you want to read more about what they do you can go to mountainmovers.org see uh, what they're doing and eight percent of your contribution goes towards helping them or about five percent after the credit cards get their cut and then the rest they send to us at the end of the month so if you're looking for a tax deduction for the end of the year and you believe in what we're trying to do here you can use option number four or if you just want to contribute another way use one of the other three options Either way, we thank you and uh, stay tuned for the next Seed Update coming soon.